Um, so I would like to welcome everybody for this webinar session uh, on internship and training opportunities in geospatial field for PhD and postdoc in Europe. Uh, today's talk was uh, is going to be delivered by Dr. Martin Mokrosh. And uh, Dr. Martin Mokrosh is an expert in point cloud processing and data collection using terrestrial, mobile laser scanning, photogrammetry, and unmanned aerial vehicles. Currently, he's a researcher at the Czech University of Life Sciences Prague, and also he's a chair of 3D for Ecotech Cost Action Project. Uh, he's also appointed as a principal investigator under ISPRS Scientific Initiative 2019, uh, which is a collaborative project of researchers from 16 institutions. Uh, he completed his PhD in forest management from the Faculty of Forestry, Technical University Zoll in Slovakia. He holds a master's degree in geoinformation and mapping techniques for forestry from the Faculty of Forestry, Technical University, Zoll in Slovakia. Now he's focused, he focuses on novel close range technologies and their applications within forest inventory and ecology. He's uh, leading a 3D for Ecotech cost action project where together with um, like all the co colleagues in Europe from the field are creating a uh, network of scientists uh, with the aim to standardize novel close-range close uh, technologies for research and practice within forest inventory and ecology. So now I would like to give the floor to Martin to say, uh, uh, to just continue the talk about, uh, about uh, the internship and training opportunities. So over to you, Martin. Okay, thank you very much. So, yeah, thank you for this opportunity to talk about this subject and also quite a detailed intro <laughs> from Arunima. So, thank you so much. And uh, so, today I, yeah, I prepared the presentation focusing on on different types of internships and training opportunities and how to approach them and how can also like to to think about the networking uh, and uh, the other thing is also how i was thinking today about it that what 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 would be the best information i can give you so hopefully i will i will have some some good uh, tips and also i i can show you how these internships and uh, training schools and workshops and so on uh, also shaped uh, my journey so you can you can see what is the really the impact of this kind of uh, workshops and and uh, training schools okay so let's start uh, so my name is Martin Mokler, as Aronima has introduced me, and uh, I'm currently a scientist uh, established in, in Czech University of Life Sciences in Prague, also partially in Technical University in Zvolen. And uh, I'm focusing on closer range technologies, and uh, I finished my master focusing on bark beetle modeling uh, using Landsat and Python programming to, to model the spread of bark beetle. Then in my PhD, I focus on terrestrial laser scanning for forestry and uh, forest inventory. So it is this kind of combination of forest management, uh, forestry together with geoinformatics and remote sensing. <clears throat> okay, so uh, as I said, I will talk about these opportunities in particular in Europe. Uh, for traineeship and, and and internship training opportunities and so on. So why sh why I should you uh, why I should talk about these kind of things is that uh, I can make my case hopefully. Okay. So during my master and during my PhD and early postdoc, I decided to do this kind of I would say summer school training school hunt. So. It means that I was applying as, to as many as possible training schools. So with some kind of background, uh, I, I, I did my master and PhD in Slovakia. And I just realized that, that I need 
need to travel outside and to get as much as possible uh, these kind of opportunities, but also to learn from from people. And to in Slovakia, we don't have so much diversity in teams. You know, we don't have uh, many foreign. Uh, in my team was none. And uh, I realized in my first internship that it's 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 really great and it's like changing my mindset and also how I think about science, how I think about the future of of, of me in, in research and so on. So I applied as much as possible. So I, I went to to many summer schools during the PhD and also really postdoc. Also, I applied for many different kind of scholarship for internship, long term, uh, short term. I use Erasmus plus plus as much as was possible. Uh, so I studied doing my master in Finland. Then I use a national scholarship program to go to Finland to do the research internship and also others. So I, I think I cracked in a, in a way how to apply for this kind of uh, opportunities. And uh, I have also many students visiting me right now and getting this kind of scholarships. So I, I, I think I, 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 I know a little bit about it. So hopefully I will, I will move some of my knowledge and skills to you today. But uh, yeah, feel free definitely to ask questions and uh, I would be really happy to, to answer them and, and to somehow help you. Okay, so my current position is in Czech University of Life Sciences in Technical University in Zvolen. Also, I'm currently uh, involved in ICPRS in Technical Commission 3 and Working Group 1, uh, which is a remote sensing data processing and understanding. And that one is led by Xinu and Liang, uh, who was my supervisor during my internship in Finnish Geospatial Research Institute. So that, that's one link to the internship. So I believe that based on the internships uh, and my then, you know, the cooperation with Xinu after the internship uh, for many years now, I mean, the IC ICPR is working with him in the working group. And uh, I'm, I'm current, these are the projects that I'm currently involved. So in cost action, I'm the chair and then I'm a co-investigator in a couple of projects and they are usually international projects. <clears throat> and uh, as I say, the research focus currently is, is on close range technologies. So I'm focusing on terrestrial scanning, mobile laser scanning, handheld, backpack, uh, iPhone laser scanning, UAV laser scanning, photogrammetry, and so, and so on and so on. So the, the focus is how to use these technologies for forest inventory, forest and for forestry, forest ecology, and, and uh, how to collect the data, how to process the data. And currently with the 3D for Ecotech collection, we're also focusing on stakeholders and people that should use these technologies. So, somehow to standardize the use, but we need to really set the basis for how to collect the data and how to how to process the data. So just some example how the data looks like. So this is just you know, teaser for those uh, data I'm working on. So this is from terrestrial scanning and uh, I can just show you and skip to, to mobile scanning. Uh, so we are doing uh, lots of benchmarkings uh, that are focusing on benchmarking of different uh, technologies, different data processing, and uh, also different low cost, low cost technologies such as photogrammetry and and smartphone photogrammetry or smartphone laser scanning. Uh, so, and this is example from the newest iPhone lidar scanning so you can use your iphone to, to scan the forest and to to measure the trees so these are quite exciting times i mean for the for this uh, this field because there is so many technologies but also can can be really uh, challenging to to make it clear and to to be able to get as much as possible from this data <clears throat> okay and I will I will finish with this video. 
uh, just to show you the data. And uh, you can also check my sketch hub and you can check all the data and download them and, and do whatever you want with them. And uh, we have also published recently the uh, review paper, so you can check uh, what is the state of the art with these close range technologies. Okay, so uh, let's move to the to the subject, and uh, I will try to to say as much as possible of tips and uh, how I felt about uh, different kinds of internship and workshop and so on, and how you should approach them. And uh, what are the really the opportunities that that are out there and how to use them properly. So firstly, the internships and what I mean by internships is the research that, that you will that you will move somewhere. So you are PhD in, I don't know, in Germany and uh, you want to go to some other team to France, uh, doesn't matter, but uh, how to get there and to get fund. So I don't mean that you will just pack yourself and go and then you will try to survive, but also to get grants to, to spend some time outside of, of your university and, and to get as much as possible uh, new skills and, and definitely uh, relationships with, with other scientists. That's, I think, the most important thing from this networking. So, so internships, then workshops, training schools, summer schools, how to get them and what they are and why you should go to those and then conferences like uh, what you can get from conferences and how to find conferences in our field and also how to get funds because uh, what was my issue during my PhD was that I didn't get I didn't have a we have some projects so I was working on the project so I have some money for research to go to the field and so on but uh, if there was some money for internship workshop or conferences it was usually for for postdocs or or senior scientists so if i wanted to go to summer school i need to find some money outside of of my supervisor or my university so i needed to apply for some grants or to find summer schools and internships that are founded from 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 those that are organizing them and conference is the same, workshops is the same. So I can I can show you that there are some opportunities that you can get like fully funded internship, fully funded workshops, and also funded conferences. So internships in in Europe, of course, Erasmus Plus. But what I want to say is that Erasmus Erasmus Plus and it's it's, I think, something extraordinary in Europe. It's, it's, it's really great when I found out during my master that something like this exists. I, I, was, I was like very surprised and thrilled because this, this is like, they have also the, the fund and the budget for the whole Europe. It's, it's incredible. So they, there are students just traveling around countries and, and getting this uh, uh, like study internships and also research internships. And you can really choose uh, every country in Europe and you can just go there for a couple of months. So what does it mean? It means that you, you can, during your master, during your bachelor, you can go for one semester, two semester to other university in another country to get full fund. Uh, so we will get a grant per month and you will just study. So I was uh, in Finland, in University of Eastern Finland, in Joensuu for one semester so i just roll as erasmus students in the university and then i spent one semester there i just i brought back uh, the credits from the from the exams and the university of your uh, like where, where you are studying they have to sign this erasmus contract and it means that they have to accept your credits from the university that you will gain in another country so that's that's excellent opportunity and it's fully funded so, <clears throat> so we will enroll, and also what is great that this European-based uh, strategy to to make people travel and and uh, to to change their mindset and so on, 
but also it's great because the universities that are accepting the students from other countries, they have to follow the rules. So you have kind of same opportunities and same settings as those students that are studying there. <clears throat> so I, I think this is, I would say, in, in kind of general knowledge. Uh, but what is not is that, uh, first of all, you have 12 months that you can use. So if you will use, I don't know, four months in your master, then you will enroll to, to PhD. Uh, then you have still, you will have eight months to go for the research. And so you, you, can, you can choose and, and cut different months to different countries and so on. So that's that's excellent. But what is another thing that I found out is also that doing your postdoc when you finish your PhD, because PhDs and masters, they have like huge variety of opportunities, I would say. And you just need to pick which one is just suited for you, or you can pick more and 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 then send the application and so on. But after you will reach the postdoc position, then you have opportunities from your project and a and, and couple of other opportunities. But you have also opportunity in Erasmus Plus. So I was in, they are shorter, so you can go for one, two weeks as a trainee or as a lecturer. So, and it's also fully funded and the grant is much higher than for the students. So it's going to really cover everything, your travel, your, your hotel and everything. So I was in Portugal, in, in Vienna, like this for one week and, or two weeks. And it's a great opportunity to, to maybe start some uh, cooperation or maybe you can go for one week to, to write some project together or, or finish some paper or you want to continue your kind of scientific relationship. So it's, it's, it's also great. So don't forget the Erasmus Plus is also for this kind of uh, types of uh, internships and, and so on. So this is like global for whole Europe. And then you have like tons of different kind of nation grants that, uh, that are out there. So I think the most, like I, that you know, most known national uh, is this DAAD. It's, uh, it's for Germany, but but th there is lots of opportunities also in this DAAD. So when you will check, you can just uh, choose what is your level if you are PhD, your master, or your postdoc, your senior scientist. There are a couple of different opportunities to get to the Germany also get outside of the Germany if you are in Germany. But that maybe I can show you some examples uh, uh, from, from Slovakia. So I think each country has this maybe similar or uh, similar uh, grants and so on. But uh, what I want to show you is this uh, SIA in, in Slovakia. And I, what, is, what is really great Try this going to open it. So, do you see the website? Arunima, can you? Yeah, we can see that. Okay. So this is example from uh, from Slovakia, and uh, you can see this is this is website for scholarship and grants. And what is great about it is that you have a database uh, database of scholarships. And grants that you can that you can check. So uh, maybe you can also use this website, but uh, uh, because usually these calls are uh, for 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 all European, but sometimes that are tied to the Slovakia. For example, this one Austria, Austria Slovakia. But uh, what is great that I I was I, I spent here hours <laughs> because I was really searching for opportunities and I was applying and applying. So I I was like checking that PhD student, okay, I want to go to the study mobility. I want to do the study mobility in, in the European Union, for example. And then you have a list of all uh, grants and opportunities that are out there that, you know, that, that you can check. And then if you will choose some of them, for example, I don't know, this Austria. So it's like research stay for PhD students, three to six months. Then you will click 
and then you will just check what what are the conditions and how you can apply then you have the the website and so on so <clears throat> definitely search also for some agency in your country and, and probably you'll find something like this like all on one place and then you can play with it and really decide how to approach it and how to get grant because you need money you know if you want to go somewhere and to 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 spend a couple of months and to to be really like kind of a free from uh, from from these kind of things okay so this is one and then probably i think it's just yeah, so this this song so i will switch back and this is for example in slovakia and i think it's kind of similar with this dad in germany but usually what i want to also emphasize is that these grants are usually in two ways so it means that these grants are for people to go outside of the country you know this in this particular one is the slovakia so they are uh, giving you grants to go outside and to get experience and go back and then then for uh, you know continue research but also they are to get people inside the country so uh, i have used this co-ship in slovakia in both ways so i went to uh, this finnish geospatial research institute for a couple of months for research uh, stay but also i have hosted a couple of students outside of slovakia and this is not just for europe so i have uh, one student from china one student from india so so you can apply and you can come for i don't know one year and you will get like salary every month <clears throat> and usually countries have, have they have this kind of opportunities so you just need to search and and and, and find find a way so this is just the example from Slovakia, and I think you know you can choose the university, the department, and the group that you want to spend the time, and then just just to search for the opportunities that are out there. <clears throat> okay, so back. And uh, since you know I'm involved in the post, and I think it's it's really great opportunity in the way uh, of like kind of projects that are international and are like extreme not, not extreme like fully open to everybody so what i want to emphasize here is that there are opportunities for internships i can show you how how to find out but also what is what is great about cost is that these are a net networking type of projects that are running for four years and the goal of this project is to create network around some topic and to solve solve some issues in the field so uh, the the best way like the best way to describe it is that uh, you have a project to put all the people together that are working in the field on the subject to just sit together and solve the issue in uh, together so uh also it should be solved in kind of bigger level than you are solving with your group because now you will have like lots of people together and and you have a money to to make workshops you have money to to meet each other and and uh, to make summer schools and internships so from the internship point of point of view the cost project uh sorry okay so uh you will just you can go here and search for keyword doesn't matter what is it and you will search for the project and you will find projects that have remote sensing in them and uh, maybe we can so you see they are, they are ongoing projects and uh, what is great was the as a PhD, as a postdoc and and early stage scientist is that you can enroll to the project and you can be part of the international projects because they are running for years and during the three years the first three years they are open so you can really join the projects so for example this fruit tree crop when you click on the project 
you will find out the description and you can also download the whole project and just read what is it about but what is important for you is the working groups and you can check who is there and so on and you can apply to the project and and to become the part of the project so it means also from the point of you know some kind of development you will you will have also uh, like kind of a co-investigator international project in your cv but that's that shouldn't be the motivation the motivation should be that you can really when you will join the project you will see what they are working on and if you will help and to become member of some task and so on you can you can really gain as much as possible from those projects so we will just click on on apply and you can you can apply right away so you will get website but it will be your account and then you will just fill it up why you want to join and then you can join and then this this cost projects sorry these cost projects are uh, they have like short-term scientific missions so each cost project has this opportunity to do it and it means that uh, uh, you can apply for these short-term scientific missions and you can go for a couple of months to to other departments and spend time there and, and to solve some issues and and work on some research and some paper and so on so just find the project you can join right away if you don't want to join you can just follow them on twitter on linkedin and to just check uh what they are doing and just uh, you know check the news and so on and, and then you can apply and to 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 use the opportunity of this this kind of networking international project okay so back to the slides <coughs> the other topic is just check my time i don't want to waste so much time of you but yeah okay so summer schools so summer schools and training schools what's what's really great about summer schools and training schools is that you have like really really uh, focus one week so you will you will be you will meet lots of interesting people you will make uh, really good connections but also it will be like really uh, you know, like intensify one week that you can go through through different topics. So these are some examples that I have been involved. So this one is, for example, Innsbruck Summer School of Alpine Research. So we have been focusing on, I would say, all the close range technology during the week for different subjects. So for uh, for for rivers, for alp like Alpine research, and my group has been focusing on forest. And we have during the week we have used terrestrial scanning, mobile laser scanning, handheld, iPhone photogrammetry, also UAV lidar. So in one day we have collected all the data, and the other day we have been like processing them. There have been keynote speeches that also be great. Also different kind of lectures, and in five days we have just went through all of all of it. And uh, also what is what is absolutely great about the summer school is that you are going to meet some like PhDs and postdocs that are working on on very similar subject as you are working on so you will make really long time uh, connections and and definitely you will you will follow follow this one week and also you can you will find many people that you will hang hang out during the conferences that are coming after the summer school so that's also also really nice uh, this is another example that we have done and also we went like the students has hand on different very different uh, laser scanning mobile laser scanning iphone photogrammetry and really great uh, lectures and 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 practices you know uh, what is the what so the question is how to how to find them because this was my problem you know with with conferences is not so not so difficult you know because you know they are doing these announcements and, and people are talking about it but also you know there is this kind of you know i would say history in, in them and so it's not so difficult also for the traineeship erasmus school and so on you will just follow and then you have to apply you have to make make those what is the uh what is the other thing is 
with the summer school they you they there are some that are going on for every two years and there, there is some history but usually it's not like that they are popping out you know there one workshop there one workshop there summer school there and so on so it's it's not so straightforward to to keep to to find them so from my side you need to use twitter for that it's it's uh, it's like simply as that so you just need to follow the right people in your field follow the people that are in icprs that are in the grss and and different organizations that you can see that they have a project and so on so so focusing on on people that are leading focusing on organizations for to show to follow let's i don't know icprs grss and so on to just really keep keep uh, updated and, and just and check check once in time you know the the uh, uh their accounts and news and so on so that's how i found all my summer schools just facebook pages and twitter and linkedin it's 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 they, there is no some some kind of website i don't know about some kind of website that it would be some uh, you know a website with all the summer schools and popping out because usually it's like in in small small networks and and so on how to choose them from my side my side i was choosing them based also for the, on the registration how much money they are asking for so that's that's incredible with cost actions is that we are making summer schools but we are giving grants in to all students so they are covering from these grants everything so it means that you will apply and you will get the grant so you don't need to pay anything and you will also get the grant for traveling and stay in a hotel and everything and then you have uh, different summer schools and so on so from my side the, the best summer schools were those that have been organized by scientists in the field out, outside from from their patient like patient you know they, they just want to move their knowledge to somebody so uh, they, they were definitely the best ones because they have then you have a workshops that are led by i don't know companies or 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 some organizations and so on but these kind of small focused summer schools are those those great ones and how to apply the motivation is is key because for example in our summer schools we can get 100 150 applications and you have to choose 10 12 students so the motivation is the key so you should really also show what you will bring to the to the summer school because that's also motivation for us as organizers that we want to have people from different subjects and really focusing on on something and and it has to be seen from the motivation that that you are really keen in your research and what you are doing and it's a great match with the summer school and you will gain something and you will bring something also <clears throat> okay so i will move so the conferences so from my side uh as a forestry forest mapping forest application and remote sensing tied together i really like focus conferences and what i want to emphasize is also that the best part of conferences are coffee breaks and meeting other people and discuss with them not just to sit all day and, and listen for eight hours and then to go to the hotel room but also like if you will start to have some connection just write somewhere i'm coming please can just meet me there and you can have conversation and updates with your colleagues and so on so for me it's great is like forest sat uh, conference or silver conference that are smaller conferences from the community like we, the the focus is quite narrow and you will meet everybody there that you are in your field and you will see the updates and so on. Then you have these really huge conferences that are also uh, important and I also like them, but from, from my side, I really like these more narrow conferences. But then you have ICPRSS and EGU that are quite, quite, quite big conferences. Also this Geospatial Week and ICPRSS is doing also this every four this uh, huge huge conference 
and how to search for conferences. I just found one tool that I have been using for a couple of years. I didn't find anything else that would be better or that wouldn't solve mm -hmm. what I'm looking for. So it's this ICPRS calendar and, and you have the calendar of upcoming conferences that ICPRS is somehow involved, but maybe you know other tools and so on. But then you can you can check uh, the conferences. You have the website, and then you can right away check what's 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 upcoming and so on. The other thing is that you should definitely think about is how to get money to the conferences because now they are quite like like really expensive. So it's like one thousand one one thousand five hundred altogether from the project to just registration and travel. So don't forget that each of these conferences have travel grants uh, on, and different support. So this ICPRS Geospatial Week, hopefully I'm correct. Uh, you have, yeah, okay. So you have, for example, this travel grants and it's working. Two of my students uh, got this in, uh, in these previous years. So they got, I don't know, 400 or 500 uh, dollars to to have uh, some money for traveling and, and stay. And also, I believe also EGU is doing this. And I, I think all the conferences are doing this kind of support. So definitely check them, apply for them. But you have to really be careful and plan, uh, right? Not just I will decide I want to go to conference and, and searching for the nearest one, but also to search like one year before, because usually these travel grants and so on, they are the deadlines are just much more earlier than others. Okay, so I think I, yeah, okay, so I have just, let's give it another five minutes. So these were like three different things what you should focus on to do the networking and, and you know, to, to really work on that, to search, to to for the summer school, then then really uh, think about the conferences, apply for the conferences, and also you have like as a PhD you have many many opportunities for the internship. You just need to try and 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 go for it. So this is just I just want to show you how how can influence your part in science to really focus on this kind of part of, of the of your PhD on the networking to really focus on the networking to create the network uh, around you. So this is the Innsbruck Summer School in 2015. So I'm there as a, as a PhD student. And and this is the timeline from the from the summer school. So I was doing a keynote speech this September in this summer school and I just wanted to show the organizers how they really shaped uh, my research, you know, and how, what was following uh, following me after after I, I was in the Innsbruck Summer School. So they have created this Innsbruck Summer School in 2015, so it was the first year, and they then decided to do it every every two years. So I was thinking during, you know, during like doing this keynote that how to like appreciate what they are doing. And then I was really surprised what I what I really found out, and it was I was there in the summer school. I met uh, Professor Pfeiffer there from Technical University in Vienna. I, I I contacted him that I want to I want to join his you know uh, uh, join his group, and he told me during the summer school that I can come. So I asked him. I I came. From the summer school, I I went to my first conference actively. Uh, so I just got the first acceptance to this huge ICPRS conference. Then I the, did two visits in Technical University in Vienna, and then we decided to apply for the for the project together. And uh, it was successful, so we have we had the project together. And this is just a picture from from that acquisition that we have been doing during the during the project and then I applied for another project based on this this network that we started to do in the ICPRS scientific initiative and we have already 16 uh, research groups together 
And from that network that we created in the project, we applied for the cost action. And, and then we got the cost action. And from, from those people that I met, I was really, like, I would say, motivated, inspired. I applied for the IC uh, ERC starting ground. I got to the interview. And then I was back in the Innsbruck summer school. So, and everything happened in this chain just because I was in the Innsbruck summer school in 2015. And I applied for 10 different summer schools, I remember. And I was accepted for this one. I was, I was really excited. And I just think that everything what, what was there out there for, to get from that. So definitely go for it. <laughs> and yeah, I, and that's, that's it from my side. So thank you very much. And if you have any questions, I can answer them hopefully. Um, okay, thank you so much, Martin, for this really insight and uh, informative talk. Uh, now I would like to request all the participants if they have any questions, uh, they can unmute themselves and they can ask here, or also they can write their questions in the chat box and. Uh, I will be reading those questions. So we have one question, Martin, for you uh, from a participant in, uh, in this meeting that uh, he's a PhD student and he's looking up uh, for a postdoc opportunity in Europe. So um, particularly in France, he's writing. Hello? Hello? <laughs> Uh, yeah, so he was writing like, what is the best way to approach for this uh, uh, postdoc positions in Europe? How, how, like, what is the best um, approach if you wanted to see some postdoc positions? You mean like, uh, like full time positions? You don't, you don't mean internship. You just to apply for the postdoc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get, yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, I would say that's like kind of different approach because for the internships you are getting grants and you are established somewhere and you will go back but for the for the postdoc positions it's a different story. Uh, what I, I, I think maybe it's kind of cheap way but uh, I definitely would use Twitter. It's, it's really widely used to, to really get these kind of opportunities. I, I I have currently two projects ongoing that has been that started because of the Twitter. So we just connect and so on. So it, it's quite surprising from my from my point of view. But uh, yeah, definitely I would I would do that and and search for the positions and uh, yeah. Okay. Just, yeah. Okay, uh, I see you wanted to ask something. Sorry, Martin, you were saying something? No, 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 no. You can go on. So, Garba, you can ask your query. Hello? Uh, okay, I think he's not here. So, we will move to the next question, which is like uh, everybody is very curious if there is like something uh, uh, related uh, to your field. Some summer school is like. Uh, coming in like a uh, couple of months if you yes. if you are yeah. organizing anything yeah so we are we are going yeah we are starting to shape it so definitely it's going to be in july and uh, hopefully we will make the call in one month or one and a half month so follow me on twitter <laughs> it's going to be there and uh, we want to make uh, interdisciplinary summer school that is going to be between uh, technology, close range technologies, uh, forest ecology, uh, taxonomy, biodiversity, and also forest modeling. So it will be like this kind of free interdisciplinary. Then other one is going to be in ICPRS Geospatial Week in that is going to be in Egypt. So we are starting to also shape the idea to, to make the workshop. <laughs> Training school that is going to be part of the part of the conference, and yeah, the upcoming next summer. 
Okay. Uh, also, like, uh, I wanted to know, like, if during PhD, is it, like, important to go for summer school and conferences? If from my, like, my point of view, yeah, my point of view is that it is essential. Because uh, I, I can see that it's really, it, it really changed my mindset, definitely. To, but also I have, I have many, many uh, cooperation that have went from that. Uh, so from some summer school, we have published a paper. So I was, I was really surprised that in one week what we can really achieve. So we did benchmarking, we published a paper. Also, I was checking, it's, it's like cited, I don't know, we have like many, many citations on that paper. And uh, also I got these different opportunities for a project and so on. So I think it's essential. So when I have a PhD, as you know, Aronima, you have already <laughs> been in, in Vienna. So um, I'm really pushing towards that, that has to be at least one like really good internship outside outside the country too i i think it's essential you should definitely do it mm -hmm. not think also, about the, the, the problem mm -hmm. people are thinking about it and they're afraid yeah. i was afraid uh, my english was not so good so i went for erasmus and i was lost i didn't understand so i just you know keep studying and so on but just think about it when you will be there that that my that can be my advice don't think about it before because you will find a way how to not to do it you know there is lots of things why not to because it's difficult okay. and you know and so on start to think about it if you should do it or not when you will be there <laughs> and then then you cannot go back so yeah yeah uh, also there is one more question from tanya uh, that is netherlands ireland good for phd in remote sensing also should one restrict countries while looking for phd or focus on the project and the supervisor yeah so uh, i think what you should change in your decision is not yeah, it's difficult to say because you are saying Netherlands and Ireland, so it means that you want to go to these countries. And so if, if this is the first thing that you have decided, these are the two countries, then you have to start to search for the universities and groups that are focusing on the subject that you like. But it's it's better to think first the what you want to do and then search the groups and then check the countries where they are situated uh, and, and then decide if you want to go there. So. Netherlands is oh, definitely great for that. So Netherlands, there is many, many, many really good groups that are focusing on remote sensing, also Ireland, but you have, you know, many groups. So we need to decide about the subject and then search for the papers and so on. So when I was searching for to go to some internship and so on, I just use Web of Science. I searched for the key keywords and so on. And then I checked first authors, last authors, who they are, what what the, what the groups are, where they are, and then I was contacting them. <clears throat> also, okay, so we have another question from the Kuhong Tran. Uh, he's saying that he's a PhD student in US and he already set up the topic for his PhD dissertation. And he wanted to expand uh, his re research through an internship in Europe. What is the best approach? Like he can try with uh, Erasmus Plus and finding professor in the same research field? Is yeah, it a good Erasmus idea? Also, yeah, Erasmus is also working in that, that you can go from outside inside, if I remember correctly. But yeah, but I, I maybe I will repeat myself uh, for, as, as for the previous uh, question that you need to find good group and that that can be maybe difficult but uh, uh, i would i would search definitely firstly you need to uh, decide for the group and then you can contact them and find out if, if they're open for such thing uh, but also you can check the website you can you can check also if they if the diversity in the in the groups is okay you know that if they are you know accepting people from outside in a way and uh, yeah, and then and then to find the resources. Uh, usually, for example, from my point of view, if I'm getting email from somebody that, hello, I'm from there and there, and I'm looking for internship, and I would like to join your group, 
I usually have more information than the student. So I think it's, it's okay to ask the supervisor, your potential supervisor, to give you some hints. So you can say, I was searching and I found that Erasmus Plus can be good, but do you have some information from national you know, point of view? So I have been redirecting some students that have been contacting me to, to better uh, grants that they can apply. So definitely find good group. And if the supervisor is good and open, it's going to guide you. Uh -huh. And uh, also Pratyu, she wanted to know if there is some open internship position under your supervision. Mm. Like it's, uh, um, yeah, it depends, we, we can say. So, so we have some subjects that uh, we yeah, so could you use somebody, yeah. Sorry. Saying that he's a he's a PhD student in IIT Bombay and he's right now working in lidar domain. Mm -hmm. So you wanted to know if there is some current internship opportunity under your supervision. Yeah. So so currently we are focusing on on terrestrial mobile scanning and machine learning. So. We definitely are open for you know cooperation and and for internships uh, on these subjects. So it's it really depends on the student and on the background that if it's going to fit. So that's that's also you should you shouldn't take it also you know in a way when you will be rejected or accepted doesn't matter. But you should also think that you know there's usually projects ongoing of the supervisors. So I have some going ongoing projects. I need to deliver something, so I'm definitely open to to host people, but those that are going to really help to 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 push us to good direction and, and to get some deliverables in project also and in the research and so on. So definitely we are open. Yeah, uh, and also uh, the Rebo, he wanted to know that all the information that you have given is only for Europeans or it's for everybody like. Africans or Asians, everyone can go for the opportunities and the options that you have mentioned during your talk. Yeah, I, I fear. I think there are some restrictions for 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 people from outside, but uh, it's like affiliation based, so not on on the national and so on, but where you are studying or where you are doing your research. So, for example, in cost actions, you can participate even if you are outside of the of the Europe, but the uh, funding is uh, is rest restricted for European. There are some cases that we can fund people from outside. So there are some special cases in this, also in Erasmus, also in these national grants. So in the Slovakia national grants, there is open for whole whole world. So. You need to just check, you know, uh, how how it's working in those like particular. Mm -hmm. And uh, Samuel wants to know that if he, you have any PhD opportunity in your group. Yeah, we will we will make a open call soon. Mm -hmm. uh, also, they just wanted to know if you have like any internship positions uh, in your field open right now, and they can join you. Yeah, so definitely we will have, uh, yeah, I should have said it in the previous question, but we will have uh, lots of open open internship positions for the cost action because we are starting new tasks, new, new uh, grant period, and we will have uh, different opportunities. So definitely go check the, the project and uh, follow it or even join the project. And we will have uh, internship positions for one, two, three months in in different groups around the Europe, uh, focusing mm -hmm. on close range technologies, machine learning, algorithmizations, and so on. Yeah. Okay. And how to find a project where, like, there is one person he is saying that uh, he don't want to move from his home country. So how to find any project? Uh, after completing PhD in remote sensing, and if they can work from their home country or their like uh, home, and they don't you want to move, it's... like home office or something like that. Yes, like if they don't want to move uh, to the other country, like in Europe, 
-hmm. and uh, they want to find some project like so how to do that like is there is any option yeah that's tough but um, <laughs> i think I the think so. yeah, yeah. I think the world is changing definitely in this because of the COVID. Mm -hmm. So, for example, I'm I'm working fully home home office. So it means that uh, I'm doing a couple mm -hmm. of days per. I don't know how how you know. I, I, I <laughs> what, you, what you meant is like if it is like uh, in like current trend like um, in europe like people are like very open for this uh, kind of opportunities that they want some expert or somebody to work on in some project uh, without moving or without leaving their uh, their place you know like um, the virtual yeah, office yeah yeah I, I i understand but i think they still not kind of i would say that it depends from case to case and it depends on on the quality of the candidate. So if you have really good candidate, you can really work on these kind of different benefits. And I think one of them can be like this. So I, I know a couple of PhDs and postdocs that are working like that. So they have like good background and, and they can work, uh, uh, I would say, uh, without the supervision efficiently because that's the problem with it it can you know because the phd is a student so you need it's like still a learning process so it, it's it's good to to not not working from from home but it depends on the cases but i can see there are changes but i was hoping that it's going to be more because now some universities are going fully back to the not home not allowing home office at all so uh, I, I I I would say it's it's not not so wide. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so they also want to know if you also uh, supervise master's students uh, and just the PhD students. Is it uh, opportunity for master students also available under your supervision? Mm, yeah, but. Uh... Yeah, I, I, I supervise master students, but not so much anymore. So currently mm -hmm. I have one master student, but yeah, it depends. So, but usually when I'm, ma when I'm supervising master students, they are established in Czech University of Life Sciences. Uh -huh. So they have to be enrolled there. So I'm accepting only those, not, not taking from, from other universities. Mm -hmm. Also, like, do you have any short-term internship opportunity in deep learning, image processing, and computer vision? Are you focusing on that? Yeah, we will have a, a PhD opportunity for that subject. Mm -hmm. Okay, and there is like um, one person, he's like saying that he's working in QGIS analyst, and he's asking if his master's in application of 3D modeling of building in urban flood from LIDAR, uh, ISPR data set is. So is there any PhD project under you related to LIDAR processing for automating creation of 3D model of building and its application using deep learning and computer vision? No. <laughs> Straight. No, no, straight. <laughs> straight. Yes. Oh, we are working yeah, no. in forestry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't like yeah. building. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so does your group focus on digital image processing and deep learning as well? Yes. Yeah, definitely. Now we are switching to like fully. We really want mm -hmm. to focus on that. So we are working on three species classification and uh, using deep learning and and this kind of approaches to using images, RGB, and, and point codes. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, I think that's all about the questions we have in the chat box. So it was really a nice talk, Martin. Thank you so much for your time and uh, really um, uh, informative things that you shared it was like really helpful i think okay so yeah uh, i think you have mentioned your email id in the slides so everybody can access uh, 
your email ID and you can ask questions later. The mm -hmm. recording will be available uh, on the YouTube channel. So you can just go and check uh, mm -hmm. what you have missed and what you need to know. Like, So thanks again, everybody, for joining us. And thank you so much, Martin, for your time. It was really a nice talk. So hope you, you. Uh, hope to see you soon in the next webinar. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.